2010 Nissan Sentra. I'm doing an injector replacement. I'm going to show you how to remove the injector and replace it or all of them. Um, to do this, the intake manifold has to come off. So I'm going to run the video on how to remove the intake manifold. And then just after that, I'll show you guys how to replace the injectors. New parts will be linked below. Check out the video. Thanks for watching. 2010 Nissan Sentra intake removal tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make the intake be removed so you can do repairs on the spark plugs, coils, injectors, or other components. Let's get started. Open your hood. Make sure it's propped up safely. Again, this is a Sentra 2.0 liter engine, 2010. First, remove the engine cover, two 10 millimeter bolts. After removing the bolts, gently lift the engine cover off. It may be stubborn. Wiggle and pull up, and it should come loose. And we'll set it to the side in a safe spot. Now, before you can get to any coils or anything, the intake has to come off. If you are trying to fix a problem on cylinder 4 right here, uh, you have minimal room you can get in there. You just have to remove some components and you can get the plug and the coil out. Everything else though, the intake has to be removed. First, we're going to start with this intake boot. Over time, these become brittle, so be careful. This is where it connects to the valve cover. I use some pliers to pull the clamp up, squeeze the clamp and pull it all the way up. We'll remove this vent hose. You can just pull it out and set it to the side. Now this clamp needs to be loosened flathead screwdriver we'll go ahead and loosen this up it doesn't have to be fully removed just loose enough to where the boot can move now we will loosen the clamp on the throttle body Get the clamp loose, but don't unscrew the screw all the way. Once everything is off, you can lift this hose. Be careful because it'll be brittle. And let's reach in here and pull this off. Find a spot that's easy for you, either at the airbox or the throttle body. Try to be as gentle as possible. If these rip after the repair, you will get a check engine light with a MAF sensor code. Set this aside. Now here's the throttle plate. You can reach in here and clean it a bit, but the best way to clean it is to remove it completely and then clean from both sides. These are four eight millimeter bolts and then a connector on the back. Squeeze the connector thumb tab and pull connector backwards. Wiggling helps get it loose. Now we'll remove the four eight millimeter bolts I have another video on how to clean the throttle plate thoroughly. I will link it below. Mm -hmm. 
after the fourth bolt is removed, the throttle plate should come off freely. Now that the throttle plate is removed, we can move on to a different area. Set it aside gently. Now let's remove the purge valve bracket. Two 10 millimeter bolts. There's a vacuum hose that comes to the back of the engine. We're going to remove one side of it. This is the PCV valve hose. Remove the clamp, pull it upwards, and pull hose up. This PCV valve was replaced. I recommend replacing yours as well. Now we will remove this hose. Remove this clamp and pull the line off at the purge valve. Removing the hose at the purge valve is easier, easier access. Once you get the purge valve disconnected, set it aside. Now the brake booster hose needs to be removed. This hose goes to the vacuum brake booster. You can get back here with some pliers and remove the hose clamp. Then wiggle and pull the hose off. Now before we remove the main intake bolts, there's two bolts we need to remove. There's a 10 millimeter bolt under where the throttle plate go goes. 10 millimeter. This bolt was a little rusted for me so be careful not to break it if it's rusted for you now on the other side of the intake remove this 12 millimeter bolt I previously disconnected the 10 millimeter bolt with it but you can leave that be remove the dipstick now we're going to remove the intake nuts on the ends and the three bolts in between the runners. After the nuts and bolts are removed, put them in a safe place. You can use a magnet to remove any bolts that don't want to come out. Once the bolts are off, wiggle and pull forward the intake and carefully remove it. And now you have access to other cylinders and injectors. Set it aside safely. When you install it, you need to replace the intake gasket to prevent leaks. Here's the part number. I will link it below. Replace the gasket before you reinstall. This comes off and the new one is put in with the guides. That's all for this video. I hope this video helped you out. Thanks for watching. Okay, so disconnect the battery, the negative terminal. Very important to disconnect this. Now, we're gonna remove our injector connectors. There's a thumb tab to press down and then wiggle and pull the connector out. Do this for all four injectors. Also, the wire harness needs to be removed out of the way. Remove the wire harness guides and gently set the wire harness to the side. 
Now there's a fuel line connector that can be disconnected by removing this gray lock. It's a plastic lock and then using a Nissan tool to disconnect the fuel line. I'm not going to be disconnecting the fuel line, but if you wanted to, this is what it would look like. You'd use your Nissan fitted tool and come in here and use your tool to release the inside locking tabs. I'm leaving it on. It's totally okay to leave it on and uh, we'll remove the fuel rail with it still connected. Now we have two 10 millimeter bolts that need to be removed. Once that's removed, we'll pull the fuel rail out and set it to the side. Gently remove two 10 millimeter bolts. These bolts are sometimes rusted or corroded. I would recommend to use extra caution with these two bolts. After bolts are removed, gently wiggle the fuel rail upwards. You may need to work it back and forth. It will eventually come out. Set it to the side gently. This part, just gently roll it over to the side and we'll have our injectors here. There's a clip that locks the injector in the fuel rail that needs to come off. And we're gonna re be replacing the O-rings as well. So this is the injector cylinder four I'm gonna be replacing. I also got a, a mat down to catch any leaking fuel. This tab, you just wanna release the sides of it and push it upward. Be careful not to lose the tab if it flies off. Remove the tab, careful not to damage it. Set it to the side. Now the injector, you can wiggle it and pull it down. Gently twist it to get it out. When it comes out, fuel will come out as well, so wear safety glasses and be ready. On this one, the fuel pressure was pretty low, not a big deal. But um, make sure your O-ring, you can see your O-ring. This one, the O-ring stayed in the fuel rail, so I had to get it out. It's a black O-ring. The black O-rings go into the fuel rail and the green O-rings go on the bottom of the injector. Let that leak out or you can put a cover on it. Be careful not to make any fire or sparks while the fuel is open. Set this here. Now here's my new injector. Here's the Nissan part number. I will link new injector and new O-rings below. Here's what it looks like. The new one comes with a black O-ring on both sides, but that's okay. Um, put a tiny bit of oil on the O-rings to lubricate them. And then we're going to reinstall this. Make sure that when you reinstall, it goes in the same direction as how it was when it came out. Put this in. It should feel pretty snug. After it's in place, we're going to reinstall the injector locking clip. The clip goes on exactly how it came off. It should hold the injector from the bottom up onto the fuel rail. Here's a close-up of what it should look like. You can reference the other injectors if you need to. Very important to get this clip on correctly. Once my new injector is installed, I'm going to be replacing the O-rings on the other injectors. Because I disturbed them, they need to be replaced. Replacements are green in color. Here is the Nissan part number. To replace these, you want to carefully use a pick or something of the like and remove the O-ring from the bottom very carefully. Careful not to damage your injector or hurt yourself, hurt your fingers with any uh, sharp objects. Gently roll the O-ring on using a uh, very small amount of oil just to lubricate it. Do this for all injectors. These all need to be replaced on the bottom and then clean the injector holes before reinstalling the fuel rail. When we put this in, we're gonna gently line it up Push all the injectors down into their spots. 
There should be a little bit of resistance and work the fuel rail back and forth until every injector goes in fully and feels snug. Then install the 10 millimeter bolts. Be very careful with these 10 millimeter bolts. These threads are known to strip out when reinstalling. Make sure that the fuel rail is lined up as best as possible and then reinstall both 10 millimeter bolts very carefully. After the bolts are installed, put the wire harness back on, plug in every injector and run the wire harness back to where it's supposed to be and then we'll put the intake back on. All right guys, that's all the information I got for you. The rest of the video is just some products and other stuff I got going on. Totally up to you if you want to stick around. I got a 15% off promo code for Oxido.com. They got a handful of products, but what they're mostly known for is their really good aftermarket LED headlights. They've been out a few years now, and uh, at first the lights they had were 200% brighter than regular headlight bulbs. Now they've upgraded the tech this year, and now it's 600% brighter. So if you're in the boonies, the suburbs, the city, um, I highly recommend you upgrade your bulbs. Nothing wrong with having an old car, but you should get with the times and have bright headlights like everyone else. These bulbs are available on Amazon. However, if you go to the Oxido website, that's where I can give you a promo code for 15% off. All you got to do is go to the website, type in your year, make, and model. There's um, basically products for every car out there and uh, what kind of light you want. They have all kinds of different lights for interior, exterior, headlights. And then you just browse to what you need and you get it. And then at checkout, you're going to type in Guillermo Auto and then hit apply in the coupon code spot and it'll take 15% off.